of the organization committee. It's uh, Professor Edgar Alden from ICTP, and he will give us an introduction about martingales in non-equilibrium uh, thermodynamics and their applications. So thank you very much for uh, having you and the floor is yours. So thank you very much, Jan, uh, and all the organizing committee for suggesting uh, my talk to be included in the program. Today, I will briefly or try to briefly summarize a uh, recent work uh, that is a review on um, how to apply martingales to stochastic thermodynamics, which is a recent trend, a line of research works that we developed over the last uh, five, six years. So uh, this is the main reference, martingales for space space. It, it is a very, it's a tutorial review, not a book. It's very long, 300 pages. I expect it has around 3000 errata. So uh, whoever reads the review and finds an, a type of uh, we welcome the feedback. Here are uh, the collaborators in this review, um, Isaac, Rafael, Shamik, Simone, Frank, and Ken. Um, and uh, most of the, the results that we review here are, let's say, come, uh, belong to this recent trend in, in apl applying Martinga theory to thermodynamics, in which we have these two very first uh, contributions, I believe, in the topic. Um, so uh, I will try to give you an idea on, on, on basics on this topic and also on how can we apply further to get new fluctuation theorems and new ideas in stochastic thermodynamics. So the review is a structure in this way. So first there is an introduction, very general of Martinez theory. Then there's a big block on how to apply this in stochastic thermodynamics in different situations. Uh, and uh, we have also classical applications such as in finance, population genetics, or applications in other domains in physics. And it's mainly de dedicated to patients and dedicated to students. So we include also mathematical proofs, a lot of examples, such that you can take it as a course on the topic and, and learn slowly. So I have divided the content on how to navigate in the review in two ways. First, um, these are the old tricks for new docs. So what should a new student learn about this, this or can what a new student in the topic learn from the review? So we have, for example, a list of symbols, we can, which is three pages of notation, which can help you to, to write a thesis because notation in stochastic thermodynamics is, is tricky. There are basics of mapping a theory with examples applied in physics, so not just mathematics. We have also basics on stochastic processes, basics for Markov and Langevin. So it's very, very self-contained, I would say. Also basics on the stochastic thermodynamics, such as the first and second laws, which were reviewed by Massimiliano and, and uh, Hugo the other day. Key theorems of Martin theory. So this is a course material for mathematicians. And also the classical applications, classic applications in finance and population dynamics. Um, this is like for a newcomer to the field, but uh, there are also new tricks for all dogs in the sense that if you have been working for a while in the topic of stochastic thermodynamics, you can make use of martingales for deriving new universal results, uh, which, which you can get, for instance, in non-equilibrium steady states or in driven processes. So there is really a collection of, of, of techniques that you can, you can uh, find by applying martingales. And this is what I will try to, to explain today, at least the most basic ones. Uh, we also have the, all the rigor. So there are two chapters that are very technical, but for most mathematically oriented, you can go there and check on the details and also applications in other fields in physics, such as quantum or spin class. So I will try to begin to introduce you to the Martingale by considering an example that probably you all know. So it's just a unidimensional uh, diffusion, over time diffusion, uh, in which we have a potential that may change in time following a protocol, plus an external force, Ft, this makes a total force to be defined by Ft. And this in the presence of a thermal bath that induces uh, Gaussian white noise fluctuations. You all know that at time t, you can solve the density of the probability density for the particle following the Fokker Planck equation. And that uh, since 2005, in work by Udo Seifer, it was the, introduced the notion of the non equilibrium system entropy associated to the particle being an x at xt at time t. 
So the average of this quantity I remind you is Kernel center. So an important uh, notion in stochastic thermodynamics is how this system entropy changes in time. So in a small time interval, the position of the particle evolves following the Langevin equation. So you know that at, th at the time t plus dt, the value will be xt plus the increment, which is given by just integrating the Langevin equation. Uh, however, it was not so clear until around 2005 how the system entropy evolves in this interval, given that the evolution of the particle was Langevin. Uh, so you may ask, how does this object change in t uh, to t plus dt? Uh, you can here say, OK, this object depends on x and on t and apply the chain rule. So partial of this with respect to time dt plus partial of this with respect to x dx. This is called the standard calculus chain rule. And uh, in stochastic calculus, this is called stochastic, sorry, Stratonovich calculus, OK? So if you do this, this change in t, t plus dt, you get into this equation, which has two terms. One is f times uh, force times velocity. So this is the heat dissipated to the environment, the environmental entropy. And the rest is understood as the entropy production. So whatever is not coming from exchange with environment, we say is a production term of entropy. This was already uh, introduced uh, in the classic paper by Jules Seifer. But something you should notice is that all these calculations were done in the Stratonovich uh, convention. So what if you take this equation and you write it in ETO? It should be just, uh, let's say, a mathematical exercise. And uh, 12 years later, we show that this equation becomes um, this SDE in ETO, which seems to be as complicated as, as the, the one in Stratonovich. But it has a very particular structure because, in particular, you see that there are two terms that look very similar. This term is the square of the noise amplitude here. So if you are in non-equilibrium stationary state, partial T rho T is zero. The first term is zero. And the, the change of the total entropy in a small interval has this beautiful form. It, it has a drift term and a noise term that is in ito that has the same amplitude. There's a square root of the same thing, where this is the current and this is the, the, the density of the at time t. So you can take these two equations. Uh, one is for the dynamics, the other for the thermodynamics, of the process, and integrate them. And this will give you the fluctuations of entropy production. Please notice that you need to specify the, 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 how x evolves in time through this equation. And that the end, stochastic entropy production depends on what is the evolution of xt. Uh, moreover, the bt, so the white noise that appears for the entropy production, is the same as the one of the party. So this is a very compact form. And moreover, this quantity here, which we called back then entropic drift, is a stochastic. So it depends on where the particle is visiting, but it's always positive. So there is a stochastic positive drift term in the evolution of stochastic entropy products, OK? So this type of decomposition appears quite a lot in Martinel theory. It is called the Dubmeier decomposition. Okay. So it means, okay, first of all, from this equation, we can show that the entropy production, stochastic entropy production, is a sub-Martingale. So whatever is the history that we observe of the process at two time s, the conditional expectation in the future is always greater or equal than the value of time s. This type of inequality you can show directly from this formula. And whenever you have a sub martingale, you can decompose it in two terms. One of them, stochastic and increasing function, is this integral of it. So it's the first term times dt. And the other term, which is, it is an ito um, integral. So this term has zero, zero mean. So whatever is the evolution of the process, it has zero mean. So it's, this is also what is called marking. So this is just pure noise, in, in other words. Another interesting manipulation is if you take this equation and you do a change of variable, you go from s to exponential of minus s. So this is a change of variable x to e minus x. You can apply Ito's lemma and go from this equation, SDE for s, to this equation, which is an SDE for e minus s. Importantly, E minus S doesn't have a term like this one 
times dt. So it has only a noise term. So it's something that depends on xt times noise. And this is in ito. So it means that this has zero mean. So e minus s, it's called martingale. It has zero mean. It has no drift. This means that if you look at the stochastic process, Langevin, up to time s, you know this information of the process, but you don't know the future. So there are many different future histories. Then uh, what you know is that the expectation in the future of the of e minus s is going to be equal to the last observation of the process. So you don't expect to grow and you don't expect to decrease. This is called Martingel property for e minus s. Okay. It's not the typical Martingel property you see in mathematics books. The process itself is a Martingel with respect to itself. Here is you have the dynamics and you have the thermodynamics. So you condition over the dynamics and you observe expectations of the thermodynamics process. Okay. This is a central result in our theory. You say this Martingale condition for E minus S. And you can always show, and this is explained in chapter seven in the review, that any convex function of a Martingale is a sub Martingale. So minus log is a convex function. So minus log of E minus S is S, is a sub Martingale. So you expect whatever you see, you will see in the future an expectation. The expectation in the future is going to be greater than the current one. So interestingly, this generalizes the integral partition theorem because you can set S to zero and you have this condition on X zero and then average over X zero and you get the integral partition theorem. So this is a consequence of the Martin theorem. And moreover, the second law, you, do, you get it from the sub Martin. You set S equal to zero and you get the second law. So this is very insightful, very fundamental, I would say, but you can get more results from here. It's not that Martingales are just to understand the process at time, time t, but they can be applied also to first pass its uh, quantities, as I will explain later. Moreover, the decomposition that I explained, you may ask, how general is this? Well, I show you for one dimensional systems, but you can have also multidimensional systems like um, colloidal particle interacting with many active swimmers, or a single particle with many degrees of freedom. This can be described by a more okay, d-dimensional Langevin equation with possibly space-dependent noise. In that case, you always also get in steady state, same type of equation. Here I, I miss a T, where you have a drift term that is always positive and depends on the currents and the diffusivity matrix. So again, you get the same structure, so it seems this result for the martingality of E minus S is more generic. So it's not just for unidimensional systems. Moreover, there is an interesting um, technique applied in martingale theory and also in finance, which is called the random time change. So up to now, I've, I've shown you how entropy production changes in time, but in the normal time. So you have a clock and your, your clock is deterministic and every time T you advance one, one second, no? So this is the evolution of entropy production in steady state with a normal time. And now let me do the following uh, trick. So I will start measuring time in a different way. So I will start measuring time with, um, by weighting it with uh, this quantity, the entropic drift. So I look at my system, and when the system is dissipating a lot of heat or producing a lot of entropy, I, my clock starts to run faster. I'm just multiplying this quantity. So I'm evaluating this quantity along the trajectory and multiplying by dt. This is what I call entropic time. This is, a, of course, an illustration. But it's, it's quite nice, interesting that you can now do a time change in this equation. And it becomes just uh, this very simple equation in this entropic time, in which this is a drift diffusion process with drift one and diffusivity one. So it means that processes that have very complex dynamics, like the ones uh, stationary non equilibrium process, these two examples that I show here, if you measure time in these units, they all become, or the fluctuations of entropy become as those that can be obtained from a particle in a ring with d1 and v equals to one. So this is a bit, was quite remarkable for us when we were doing research in this, in this um, topic. And uh, 
you can show this uh, illustrate uh, these examples if you look at the fluctuations of entropy production up to a time t equals to one uh, the distribution is typically non gaussian for example if the particle is uh, drifted in this periodic potential it stays a long time in the in this minima and, and the, the entropy production at a fixed time has this uh, structure with with peaks no this has been shown also in experiments so if you do experiments with a colloidal particle in a periodic potential or uh, you have a single electron box or an electron jumping in and out from a box you compute into reproduction and you see the distribution is typically non gaussian so this is a bit of an urban legend so entropy production fluctuations in general are non gaussian however if you scale time so if you use this entropic time and you wait until entropic time reaches a given amount all these models uh, the distribution of entropy production at the entropic time equal to one is Gaussian with mean one and diffusivity one. So you can get it by solving this simple model, which is a particle in a ring. It's quite, quite striking. And uh, we were not the only ones to find this. I'll show you later. Uh, also in the housekeeping entropy production, you, you get the same property. Uh, but uh, this result is very insightful because it tells you that all statistical properties that are independent on time contractions or dilations should be universal. So for example, the global minimum of entropy production does not uh, depend on when it happens. So it is a quantity that does not depend on your scale of time. So you, if you compute the distribution of the infimum of these three different models I showed in sketches, they all have the same distribution. And this distribution is the one of the particle in the ring. But there are infinite properties like this. There's also the supremum before the infimum, or the number of times the reproduction crosses an interval. And these do not depend on when it happens. So these are universal properties. You can see a review in chapter five or chapter seven in our in our review. Moreover, this nice recomposition into drift and diffusion term um, it allows you also to compute non-universal quantities, such as, for example. The final factor. The final factor is not a universal quantity, um, and you can show that um, from from the equation I showed you before, you can get an uncertainty equality for the entropy production. It is equal to two plus uh, the variance of of the entropic time divided by the mean. So this looks like an uh, uncertainty relation because this is always greater than equal to zero. So this is always greater than equal to two, but uh, you can get directly the the. the uh, the final factor of entropy production by computing the fluctuations of entropic time, as I show here. Moreover, you can extend the result to non stationary process and get an extra term uh, that is basically depending on a, a correlation between the system entropy and the entropic drift. So this is a bit more, more complex to, to understand, but it has some similarities with a very recent uh, work. Uh, which is called the variance sum rule for entropy production, where they computed also um, exact expressions for the variance of a non equilibrium process and uh, split it into terms. Some of them depend, this uh, calligraphic S depends also on correlations between force and the displacement, which is a bit of a particular case of, of these ideas. But so the, there should be a relation between recent progress in, in the field and the uh, and this result that we had in, in the past, on which, as I say, this can be also called a variance sum rule. So we are write, writing the variance as a term, sum of different terms. So um, all I've shown until now is for stationary states, but there has been progress in non-stationary states. For example, in this work by Chun and No, Piarin 19, they showed that the housekeeping and the reproduction for any non-equilibrium process, so this can be also driven, has also the same structure. So it's also exponential martingale um, for any non equilibrium process. Uh, also, we show that the entropy production is general, not an exponential martingale when you have driven process, but you can find a compensator. So find a process that is an exponential martingale, which is just the entropy production plus something else. Uh, and I talked about this in a previous work, so I'm not going to insist about this. But uh, this is useful to derive Jasinski's equalities at stopping times. 
So when, when you first cross a threshold, so you, you are not looking at fixed time, but stopping times, also design gambling demons. Um, and there has been also more advanced progress on how to find the um, Martingales in a general non-equilibrium process and to derive, for example, green cubo formulas for non marketing process. I guess Hong Kian will talk about this uh, during the conference. And moreover, we are working also on a case where you are out of equilibrium, but you also have unidirectional transitions, which is a bit of a pathological case. Uh, and in that case, we find that the non-adiabatic entropy production is, is a key concept, uh, but this is a bit technical. I will not talk about it. Today, uh, I guess we will have a, a draft uh, sooner or later published in the archive. So um, I will continue my talk by trying to rationalize um, why there exist many martingales and there are many phases of, of the, the second law um, uh, regarding martingales by presenting you what we call the tree or football club of second laws. This is a bit of an advanced topic um, but it is essential to understand um, our theory in full rigor. So this is a, um, a hierarchy of second laws, meaning that one of these uh, generalizes the next, uh, which generalizes the next. They have very strange names, but uh, these strange names mean different degrees of conditioning. So conditional, strong second law, strong second law. I will explain this in a bit. And they also have a bit of esoteric names concerning this lambda sigma, because these are specific functionals of trajectories, which have a given form. Uh, and depending on the form, you can get as particular cases, the work, the entropy production, housekeeping heat, et cetera. And most of these um, uh, results are generalizations of fluctuation theorems that already exist, whereas others give to new results that I will try to introduce uh, to you at the end of the talk. So in this uh, football club or three or second laws, most of the results are well known, but there are a couple of them which are new, presented for the first time in this review. So one of the key um, features of these laws is that they are generic in the sense that they apply to both Langevin and Markov's jam processes. And they only have one key assumption that is that this, the ratio between path probabilities is well-defined in the sense that you cannot have um, um, cases in which the log of this ratio diverges. So this, in a mat very mathematical way, it means it's called absolute continuity. So if P, the probability for a trajectory in the process is zero, then the probability of the, of the trajectory in the reference process, which we will use for uh, calculations, should be also equal to zero. So typically this Q is the probability in the time reverse process. So this is in other words, meaning micro reversibility. So you see the forward and the reverse trajectory with non-zero probability. Anyway, uh, a, a big result, or okay, a key um, result in, in, in deriving this uh, hierarchy of laws is the fact that ratios of path probabilities are martingales. So if you take the uh, path probability of a reference process Q divided by the, another path probability of your process of interest P. So I, I have a physical process. It has a path probability P. And I will consider another random, whatever other process that has another path probability Q. So if you do this ratio and you compute the conditional expectation given the history up to time M, you can show that um, when you average this over P, this is equal to R at the time M. So this is a martingale when you average with, the, with respect to the probability P. This is a two-line calculation, but one has to be very careful and for the reason I will explain in a bit. When you find such a martingale, it is uh, quite nice to realize that if you apply a convex function to Rn, any convex function, of a martingale is a sub martingale. So this is the same thing I explained for E minus S. If you do minus log of E minus S, then you will have a sub martingale. So you can first prove a martingale for E minus S and from this immediately follows that S is a sub martingale. Uh, moreover, um, as you can show here, if you put this expression here, you have this type of, of inequality 
which looks like callback libler, but it's more detailed than callback libler because you are not averaging over all p of x zero n. You are doing an average with the conditional expectation. So you have this type of, of averaging. So this is what we call usually a conditional strong second law. We know the process up to time n, and what we expect in the future is what we're doing, we're calling conditional strong second law. If you put m0, you will have callback library. So what we know very well from the uh, foundations of the field. Uh, okay, so this is what I'm, I'm just showing here. This we call usually second law with without the CSS. This is conditional strong second law, and this we call second law. Moreover, here is an important message to all of you that this Martingale, Martingality property is not so generic when you look at processes that are not time homogeneous. So for steady states, this works. For equilibrium, if you start in equilibrium, this works. But if you have a time inhomogeneous dynamics, such as a relaxation or a driven process, this is not going to work. And this is a central message of our review. So you cannot just say that Q over P is a marking. You have to be very careful and check case by case. In the case, the dynamics is not time homogeneous. Uh, moreover, these are a bit more details, but uh, this is just to introduce you to the notation. There are two classes of functions that we consider. One is called sigma, which has P over Q evaluated on the reverse. So this is a typical form that entropy production has it has probability divided by the probability in, of the time reverse trajectory. And this could be also time reverse dynamics. But there exists a second class of, of uh, um, functions that are more simple. It's just the probability to see the trajectory in the process divided by the probability to see in another process the same trajectory, so without time reversal. One particular case of this lambda functional is the housekeeping heat for okay, adiabatic entropy production introduced by uh, Massimiliano and, and Chris Vandenbroek. So there exist different families, and these events are important because the lambdas are always Martingales, but the sigmas, you have to always add um, a compensator. Moreover, there is even a, a worse uh, creature or a monster, which is what we call sigma G functionals, which are um, a generalization of the sigma. So here, what we are doing is we have a process P, which evolves from zero to T, and we look at the probability, it's a marginal probability in a sub-interval RS. And we compare this to a Q process in which we look at the time reverse trajectory, but time reverse with respect to T, but in the sub-interval t minus s, t minus r. This is a bit of a complicated creature, but it's very fruitful because from it, you can get most of the results uh, from 10 years ago in, in stochastic thermodynamics in what concerns second laws. So for example, if you put in the Q process, you put the time reversal and you take the RS interval is the full, the full uh, interval, you get the stochastic entropy production, but you can get other uh, interesting quantities. Um, the, the, what was very surprising to us is that this object has this interval. You will say, okay, this is just uh, pure mathematics. But besides that, with this interval, we show that the process is uh, sub Martingale with respect to forward time and super Martingale with respect to backward time. So it conditionally increases. Uh, it, when increasing time and conditionally decreasing when looking backwards in time. Again, this is very recent, so we are still not fully sure about the interpretation, but we have a, one result I will present in a minute, which uh, may we are looking for feedback to try to get to you know what, what does this mean. Okay, this is very, very recent. Uh, you, have, you have five minutes. Very good. Five minutes and done. Yes. Great. So a particular case of this um, uh, P and Q could be that you have a process P and um, starting at, at the initial density rho zero. And then you look at the same bulk dynamics P, but starting from a different initial density. If you do that, this sigma G uh, object becomes a very easy to understand quantity, which depends only on the uh, current time density. So this is the log of the density of the process P at time T divided by the density of the process T at the same time, okay? There are two processes and you evaluate the density at the same time in the process. So this implies among other things, this very well-known result 
historical second law that appears in Thomas Cover book, for instance, uh, and other results. For example, we, we can use this to prove that the non-equilibrium free energy in a relaxation process is a backward uh, submartingle. This means that if in a relaxation you see uh, trajectories of particles or, or the system in the future, so you see how they evolve in the future, you can predict the expectation of the past. So this is different from the classical second law, which we say in the future, entropy will increase. Now we say, we look at trajectories and now we know where we come from. So we can say that in the past, the particles or the system on average at a higher uh, non-equilibrium free energy. This is a totally new result and your feedback is extremely welcome. Um, okay, I should start closing. So um, I just presented one part, which is fixed times, but Martingales are really good to extend ideas to stochastic times. This is already an idea that was exploited by the Nobel laureates in economics, Black and Scholes with fair markets. Uh, this I explained in another word, so I will not enter into this. This has many applications for biophysics and also solar cells and uh, to extract, for example, extreme values and survival statistics of the work. Uh, and this can be extended to non-equilibrium to driven process, but I have no time for this. Uh, the, my, the main message is that there are these second laws, there's the hierarchy at fixed times, but also the hierarchy at stopping times. You can look at the particle until it crosses a threshold and measure the, the dissipation from time zero until uh, you cross the threshold. So this hierarchy exists also for stopping times. So there are two football clubs in the end, one at fixed times and the other at stopping times. So there are two hierarchies, even though maybe it's not clear yet in the review. Uh, I finished by announcing there will be an archive submission this week about uh, stochastic thermodynamics of particles in fluctuating fields and that fields can locally extract heat from above when you dri drive a particle out of equilibrium. You can check this week. Uh, we are also working on other topics, bullfrogs, hair cell bundles, perceptual decision making, but this will be part of future talks or discussions. And I end up by acknowledging my collaborators in the quest of Martin Gales, my, my group at ICTP and funding PNRR. Thank you very much for your attention. And this is for students. Uh, I have three courses, lecture courses in YouTube that could be useful for you to get introduced in the field. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope I'm not out of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a very nice talk. You were just on time. Uh, and now we have uh, time for questions. Um, the general rule for questions is that the junior attend, uh, attendees will be given priority. So if they are junior people, PhD student, master student, young postdocs, uh, please raise your hand uh, virtually uh, by this reactions button and clicking raise hand and you will be able to ask questions. <clears throat> um, in the meantime, um, there is one question by Tom Aldridge. So I, yeah, you can unmute yourself. So please ask. Hi, thanks for the great talk, Eka. Um, so do I understand properly that the, 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 the mark, that if you're in a stationary distribution, non-equilibrium steady state, the martingale approach is always going to work, but if I'm in a system in which there's a time dependent, my Hamiltonian is time dependent, or I'm in a system where the Hamiltonian is constant, mm -hmm. but the system is evolving, the distribution is evolving, it's not guaranteed to work, but it might do. Yes, so this is, uh, I, I totally agree. So if, if you start in a stationary state, uh, the exponentiated negative entropy is martingale at all times. Uh, and otherwise, it is not. But uh, you can still find a process that is martingale. And the process is not, is not E minus S. It's E minus S minus um, an extra term that is related to the fact that the density at stopping times is not the same density as what you will get if you don't stop if you don't have a, um, a first-party criterion. So 
uh, let's say entropy production is not Martingale in or not some Martingale in uh, driven process or time dependent, but you can still find a Martingale, which is useful. Okay, but whether or not that extra term is easy to interpret is the key question. Yeah, actually, the, the, this extra term is not difficult to interpret because it relates to to the asymmetry of the of the process at stopping times. So it has, um, when you average it, it has this form. So it's the logarithm of the density of time t compared to the density of the conjugate time of the process. So this is related to the work by um, Van den Broek, Kawai, and, and Parondo, 2007. I don't know if you remember the um, dissipation, uh, okay, the phase space perspective. So, so what they showed was that the dissipation of a time dependent process is related to how different is the phase space density of time t with respect to the phase space density of the time reverse process at the conjugate time, t tau minus t. I don't know if okay. this is PRL 2007. So in, the, in this case, we have a similar result. You have, to, you have to include also this asymmetry in the process. Um, the symmetry of the forward process at the stopping time with respect to the backward at the conjugate time of the stopping time. In the steady state, they are equal, so there's there's no difference. So okay. for, for details, uh, I think paper with Manzano, uh, PRL 2021 is is where we first found how to extend it to to driven process. Okay, or right. chapter, eight, chapter eight in the review. Thank you. Right. Very helpful. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, I see. Uh, so, Tarek? Yes. Um, can you hear me clearly? Yes. 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 OK. Um, just so when you mentioned that at steady state, any ratio of, uh, f f if I recall correctly, functions of trajectories um, will be a martingale when you define the R log ratio of Oh, okay. It's not the log ratio. It's just Q over P. It's so a ratio. It's it's a ratio of any function of trajectories at steady state. Well, it should be to the two path probabilities. Oh, both, path probabilities. Both okay. of which are stationary. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I'm I'm just wondering if this uh, generalizes the sequential probability ratio test, the Wald uh, results, because what what happens there is that they consider the log ratio of um, two path probabilities conditioned on two different hypotheses and then you get yes. decision decision times this is a very good question and actually world uh, sequential probability ratio test is for iid processes so it's in the end it's like stationary so you are you are drawing uh, the numbers from a lottery but it's a stationary process and uh, indeed, the, the first time we came up with results that inspired us to do this research to, to Martingale, at least Isaac Neri and I, was when we started to, to, to work on, on Wald's decision test. So we have a, an article from 2015 where we had no idea about Martingale theory, but we were looking at, at very similar questions. So in particular, how long you need to wait until um, you have with some confidence, you can decide whether a movie is running forward or backwards in time. So it's a decision-making process. To be optimal in decision-making, you have to measure probability ratios. So if you want to decide optimally on the R of time, you should do log of path probabilities with respect to the R of time. And then what you get is you should measure entropy production if you want to be optimal. So it's related to what, yes. I. But I, what I'm saying is this: it's more general. So entropy production is the log ratio of forward versus backward path probability. Yes. But this it's more general. Any, that, yeah. That's any, why any any two things you want to distinguish will be a martingale at steady state. Yeah, that's why there is all this hierarchy because some of the things here is not entropy production; it's just mm -hmm. probability ratios. Mm -hmm. Okay. So actually, yes. So this one is always martingale with respect to p, and. Uh, you don't need that it's related to thermodynamics at all. So you, you're right, yes. Mm -hmm. 
then the beauty for the community at the end is to to set to choose p and q that uh, are related to a physical process that you can do in the lab or or that makes sense to to, to study non equilibrium no but you can do finance if you want with p over q that's why there was all this research by black and skulls and and a field of quantitative finance so yeah indeed <laughs> Okay, um, so I think that uh, we are just on time. So thank you, Edgar, again. And the next uh, 